everyone, Leanne from Cake and Eat It 3. Um, those that are following our journey so far um, know that we went away last year for a three and a half month road trip overseas and now we're back overseas uh, on our five month uh, road trip. Now, when you travel full time in Australia um, and you have a full rig, whatever that rig may be, uh, and you go overseas, obviously you're going to have the problem that you have to find somewhere to store your vehicle. Um, and now there are babies, so let's make no mistake, you put a lot of time and money and there's a lot of love for our rigs, um, particularly when we're full time in them and they go home. Uh, now when we were deciding to go over last year, we looked at multiple possibilities for storage options and every state of Australia, there's various caravan parks, various uh, farms, stations, uh, lots of opportunities. Just put the feelers out, generally on the Facebook groups, they will know, someone will know uh, where you can store your vehicle. Now obviously undercover is perfection. We were extremely lucky that we were able to find somewhere that offered that. Um, now, plenty of options in Perth. Um, uh, Advent Park, which is not far from the airport, uh, they offer it for approximately five to six dollars a day. Uh, now, you have to be careful though, some of them have certain periods of the year, like over holiday periods, that they may not be able to offer it. So depending on how long you're going, make sure you make it really clear uh, how long you're going to be needing um, to have that stored there. Because obviously if you're overseas and it has to be moved, that's going to be a big problem for you. So, find a place where you can store it. Number one, an obvious one. Uh, how long, what climate is the vehicle going to be in while it's stored there? So obviously uh, over here, our camper van, um, Betsy, that we're just picking up now, um, she, we can't leave water in tanks, things like that over here, due to the uh, temperatures and what it drops to, uh, you know, you'll end up cracking water tanks and causing all sorts of dramas. So number one thing, empty pretty much um, as much water as you can from the tanks. We leave some in our water tank, absolutely nothing in grey water, absolutely nothing in the toilet cassette. Now we take the opportunity to give the toilet cassette and the toilet and the bathroom a really thorough clean. Leave it really nice, you'll definitely appreciate that when you come back. And it's a good time, um, you're leaving seals and things like that, you want them properly cared for um, and nothing eating away the seals in your absence. Now, um, so the water in the normal drinking water tank, we don't empty ours out. Everyone has their own opinion on that. Look to each their own. We make sure when we return, there's a couple of tanks that we use to flush that out that would only be used for cleaning and such. So we're not gonna be drinking that water when we return. We're not gonna be drinking the next sort of two tanks that go through that. Um, now, we would then, after that, during that time, we've bought bottled water. So basically, Coles sell, you know, your 10 litres for four bucks. We just use a few of those to start with for our drinking water, give the tanks a nice flush out, and away you go again. And we've done that over the years for multiple rigs that we've had. We've done that no problem, with no problems. So each to their own, uh, do what makes you feel comfortable. That's how we do it. Um, okay, temperatures, we've done perishable food, a pretty obvious one again, but even to the point, food in, dried food in boxes, so your pastas, your cereals, you put them into Sistema containers or Tupperware containers or whatever you've got on board, or better still, finish it, um, particularly with us being over here for five months, we finished as much perishable goods as we could, cleaned out all the cereals. It's a really good time to clean out and start again. Most people are not carrying three to four types of cereal um, when they're full timing on the road anyway. So clean them out, start again when you get back, um, nice and fresh. It not only is not gonna, you're not gonna come back to a mess, um, stops rice, mice, rats, um, now, if you get the mice and the rats in the van, not only will they make a mess for you, they'll also potentially eat your wiring, which is obviously going to cost you a lot of money, be very inconvenient, and you know, not, 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 not a nice surprise when you return home. So generally, get rid of as much perishable stuff as you can. You know, we did three weeks out, we were eating food, left, right and centre, cleaning everything out. Uh, again, defrost the freezer, Start eating your food out three to four weeks prior. Make sure you've got nothing in your fridge or freezer. Door ajar, hang a towel, light towel, 
over the door of your van fridge so it can't close no matter what happens in your absence. Um, Depressure the water taps. Okay, uh, turn your pumps off, obvious. Depressure the water by going through the van, turning on all your taps and clearing the water out from them. Again, we're just looking at general maintenance items that you would generally do on a week to week basis in your normal home anyway for night time or leaving it for a weekend. Continue that and make sure that you really do tick and flick these items to look after your rig the best that you can. Um, emptying of the toilet cassette is a pretty obvious one. Already mentioned that. Uh, once the vehicle was in place, we disconnected the vehicle battery. So obviously you don't want to be causing any uh, wear and tear on the battery in your absence, irrespective of where it's stored and whether you have a solar setup, which we have full solar, full everything on ours. Doesn't matter, you don't want wear and tear on those sorts of things while you're not there. Uh, batteries, don't forget uh, remote control batteries, walkie-talkie batteries, um, kids' toy batteries. Anything that has a disposable or rechargeable battery in it, remove the batteries. Um, for the obvious one of corrosion and leaking of batteries, it's more common than you think. And depending on the different climates that you're in, some may experience that more than others. Uh, remove them, no drama. You're not up to replace anything on your return. You know, common sense again, but you know, one that's easily forgotten in you are organising all sorts of pack down, um, it want an easy one to forget. Um, drink all the booze before you go. <laughs> hey, you're going away. Uh, we think it's a good time to clear out with that as well. You're going to bring back your duty free and um, you know, no need to have it sitting there. You'll also experience a bit of evaporation from your spirit. So we can't have that, can we? So all the best for planning your holiday, going on your holiday, um, packing down, visiting family back home, uh, however that, uh, far away that may, may be. There's lots of reasons that you could have to put your rig up for an extended period of time. And, you know, don't take it lightly. They're our babies and let's look after them. So thanks and happy travels.